You may not know this about me, but when I resigned as the managing editor of arguably one of the internet's largest home theater publications after 10 years, I didn't just leave the AV press, I actually left the hobby altogether. I sold off nearly six figures worth of equipment that I had accumulated over my time and went full dark side. And what do I mean by dark side? Well, I mean Bluetooth speakers and sound bars. And it was arguably one of the best things that I ever did. And it proved to me one simple fact. Sound bars aren't evil, but are they better than a discrete home theater system? Well, strap in, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because we're gonna answer that question in more as we review LG's flagship soundbar. After years of playing with big, complicated systems, I simply was looking for something simple and something I hadn't experienced yet, which was rare. And soundbars fit the bill because up until that point, soundbars were a four-letter word in the home theater industry and it was simply something that I wasn't allowed to talk about because, well, this was pre-manufacturers starting to build soundbars of their own. So soundbars being mass market weren't seen as the entry point for people to get into the home theater hobby. They were seen as the beginning of the end of the hobby. And so anytime soundbars were to be brought up, they were always to be brought up and mocked or vilified or seen as less than what you could get from discrete speakers. And I think that this is an attitude that permeates the hobby even today. And so, I wanted to see if it was true. And so I lived with soundbars as my primary home theater and two channel listening systems for several years. And it was an eye opening experience and one that I am so glad that I had. But now that we have our own channel and are completely independent, we can talk about soundbars and what better soundbar to kick it off with than LG's flagship. This is a 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos enabled surround sound system. Yes, it is still a sound bar, but it is a system. It has a main bar, a wireless subwoofer, as well as two wireless surrounds. Now the sound bar itself can step in and replace an AV receiver because it has two HDMI inputs as well as an HDMI monitor out. Now the HDMI monitor out has support for EARC as well as ARC. This enables you to listen to higher res audio formats as well as surround sound codecs through a single HDMI cable. Now EARC also means that there is support for Dolby Atmos surround sound as well as DTSX. And to get the most out of these surround sound formats, there is the AI auto room calibration feature that LG includes with this particular soundbar. And we're gonna get into that in just a moment. But apart from those features, it also has the ability to play back high res music up to 24192. And it features Bluetooth 5.0 as well as Google Assistant built in. So all of those features are great, but arguably my favorite feature about the LG soundbar is that it was designed in partnership with Meridian. Meridian is a high-end brand out of the UK and they've been pioneering digital music and movie playback as well as active loudspeaker technology since before it was cool. So the question for me is, does all of that know-how translate to a better experience here? I found this setup and installation of this LG soundbar to be very simple and straightforward, especially after I downloaded the app, which unlocks a lot of this soundbar's potential. I also ran the AI room correction software before sitting down and doing any critical listening. And once I did all of those things, the sound of this system is rather incredible. But let's break it down into its individual parts, starting with bass. Given the modest size of this subwoofer, I didn't have a lot of high expectations in terms of what it was going to be capable of. I was just sort of hoping that it would round out the soundbar's performance. So I was shocked at the sheer amount of bass and the raw impact that it possessed. Arguably the most important loudspeaker in a soundbar system is the subwoofer because soundbars and their surround speakers arguably don't have any bass of their own. And so the subwoofer has to do a ton of heavy lifting here. And to be frank, a lot of soundbar subwoofers pull up short. That is not the case here as this subwoofer is incredible. 
For those of you who may prioritize dialogue or find yourself missing key phrases in your favorite movies, maybe due to some hearing loss, this is going to be a soundbar worth checking out for the mid-range is incredibly clear. It has tremendous focus and in-room presence that I absolutely love. I'm not gonna call it neutral. It is on the cooler or leaner side of neutral, but as a result, dialogue is just so crispy and clear. High frequencies are airy and extended. They have a little bit of a sheen, and like the mid-range, they are a little bit more on the leaner or cooler side. So they aren't natural in their ultimate extension and decay, but they're also not shrill or fatiguing, even at high volumes. Which brings us to the system's sound on a whole. This is, after all, a Dolby Atmos surround sound system. And as a system, it is exceptional. You feed it a Dolby Atmos signal and be prepared to have your mind blown. Now there are several surround sound presets inside the app as well as accessible through the remote. And by default, LG chooses AI sound, but there are movie and standard and other presets. I found AI sound to be the absolute best performer in our situation. And as a result, the surround sound presentation from this LG system is awesome. It is absolutely awesome. And when watching movies, the mild directionality that sound bars tend to have completely disappears as the entirety of our room was transformed into the scene we were watching unfold on screen. And I'm not going to say that this is the finest example of a 360 degree surround sound presentation that I've ever heard, but it's up there. And that was the single most startling thing, because while it may have lacked the ultimate pinpoint detail, the fact that there was so much detail present in its surround sound performance, including above and far out to the sides of our listening position was amazing. So if you are on the fence or you may be thinking that, oh, these reflective height channels or things like that just po can't possibly work. I assure you they do, and they work well here. Dynamics are impressive, provided you take care of one key setting inside of the app, and that is DRC. DRC stands for Dynamic Range Control, and it is on in its default setting. And what this does is it limits how loud passages can be while raising the volume of softer passages. This is great for watching movies at night without maybe disturbing other people in your house, but if you're looking for that full cinematic punch, you're gonna wanna turn that off. And when you do, the full force and impact of this LG system is unleashed, and it is amazing. Watching content like Netflix's Umbrella Academy Season 2 and Michael Bay's Six Underground through this soundbar system was incredible. Absolutely incredible. If you don't think that soundbars can sound positively huge, you need to check this system out. The LG is just a straightforward, easy to use surround sound system that even manages to sound great when listening to two channel music. We streamed a ton of music from Tidal through the LG, and we found that we were listening to music more and more because it's just so accessible and easy to use. I'm not gonna say the LG bests our higher end two channel setups, it doesn't, but it also isn't embarrassed by them either. And speaking of ease of use, if you already own an LG TV and you decide to pair it with this LG soundbar, you should know that the integration between the two is absolutely flawless. As good as the LG soundbar is, it isn't perfect. And there are a couple of things that are missing here. And one thing in particular that I wish LG would have just left off completely. One of the most notable omissions and one of the things that you guys are most likely going to notice is its lack of tone controls. Yes, you can adjust the volume of each channel independently, but you cannot affect its tone. So you better like the way that this sounds straight from the factory because there's no real way to customize it. Also, there are no analog inputs present here. So if you were looking to connect, say, your turntable that has a built-in phono preamp directly to the soundbar, you're gonna need to use a converter box, specifically an analog to digital converter box, and we'll link to a few down in the description below. And as for the item that I wish LG would have just left off completely, well, it's that front-mounted display screen. It's not the most intelligible. You can't defeat it. It can get brighter, you can dim it, but again, you cannot defeat it unless you just turn the soundbar off, which is silly. 
And frankly, with the app being so good and right at your fingertips, I kind of wish LG would have just foregone a display altogether. In terms of comparable products, obviously LG makes a host of other soundbar solutions, many of which are kind of scaled down versions of what we're reviewing here, some even being just soundbars themselves, whereas others are complete systems. And we're gonna link to all of those down in the description below. But rather than compare the LG to, well, itself, we thought we should point out a couple of other soundbars in and around its price point that may be worth taking a look at. Now the first one that comes to mind is Sennheiser's Ambio soundbar. Now it is more expensive than the LG system here, but it is an all-in-one system. So if you don't wanna futz with subwoofer placement or surround sound channels, the Sennheiser may be worth a look. Another soundbar worth considering would be Sonos's new Arc system. Now you can get the Arc as a soundbar, you can flesh it out with a subwoofer as well as surrounds. However you configure it, that is going to change the price and fully fleshed out, yes, the ARC system is a little bit more than the LG here, but I do find that the two would compete favorably, at least on paper. Another soundbar that is just as stylish as the LG, if not maybe a little bit more so, would be Bang & Olufsen's Biosound Stage. Like the Sennheiser Ambio, this is an all-in-one unit. It retails for about the same price as the entire LG system, but it is definitely worth a look here. And if you're looking for a budget option, my go-to affordable soundbar solutions have always come from Vizio. They have a brand new line out for 2020, and we will link to a few of those down below. So check those out if you're on a budget. Now, in terms of how the LG soundbar system compares to discrete or true or traditional home theater speaker systems, depending on your budget, I think that not only does it compete, it might actually be the better solution. Now we have a number of budget-friendly home theater systems in this house, specifically the Yamo speaker system that we've reviewed on this channel, powered by our favorite Sony receiver, and the SVS Prime speaker system, also powered by that same Sony receiver. In direct comparison to the LG soundbar, I would say that the LG soundbar is actually as good, if not better, than both of those systems. In fact, I think that you're probably going to have to step your home theater budget up to around $2,500 or more to outright best what the LG brings to the table in terms of performance. Now, if you are looking for a system that you can experiment with, change components out, or grow over time, obviously the LG is not that type of system, in which case you should go with a discrete home theater. But if you're looking for sheer performance that's easy to use and mostly plug and play, the LG is incredibly hard to beat. So to sum it up, I don't think sound bars are evil and I don't think that you should either. And I also don't think that sound bars are just a good solution for people that favor convenience over performance because in 2020, through this LG system especially, I think sound bars can not only compete with entry-level home theaters, I think they can outright embarrass them. And the reason I say that is because the Meridian influence can really be felt and heard throughout. For this LG soundbar sounds a lot less like a mass market product and a lot more like an entry-level Meridian one. So that's my review of LG's flagship soundbar system. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, I have a question for you. In 2020, do you think a soundbar system competes with entry-level or even mid-fi home theater systems? And if you're watching this through a soundbar, what do you have? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring the bell so that you are sure to be notified when new videos are released. If you use any of the links that we leave you down in the description below, know that that is your way of showing your support for our channel and the work that we do here, and we thank you. If you are looking for another way to potentially support this channel, consider becoming a member. You can click join right next to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and I have to get out of here. So remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. Happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.